Hello, I'm Sean Mill, and I'm filling in for Chad Booth on this week's edition of The County Seat. In this week's program, we're going to explore the film industry and incentives that are used to increase productions in the state of Utah. And for our story on that, we go to Derek Dowsett. You might not realize it, but when you turn on your TV or sit down in a dark movie theater, a lot of the time, you're looking at Utah. What makes Utah a desirable location for film production is that we're turnkey here. We have uh, some really beautiful, varied landscapes. Uh, you can get out to the West Desert and get an entirely different look by traveling 30 minutes to the east of Salt Lake, for instance, and, and seeing our beautiful mountains, our canyons. Uh, the Alpine Lakes of the Uintas. You can go south uh, into areas like St. George and Kanab and Moab and find beautiful Red Rock uh, and otherworldly locations pretty readily. One of the most sought after locations of the state and, and one that we've shared in, in probably the most location packages that we've sent out in the past um, is the Bonneville Salt Flats. Um, because it's so unique and, and outside of, uh, you know, a, another location that's in Peru. Um, very desirable for getting that, just a white sheet of nothingness against a blue sky. I would not be surprised if that was, if the Bonneville Salt Flats was the most photographed place on Earth. One would assume that Utah's natural charms would effectively lure television and film productions on their own but the Utah Film Commission is charged with making those connections with large production companies. We market the state as a filming destination. Uh, we help filmmakers with finding resources in the state like crew, um, support services, uh, production equipment, production specific vehicles, locations, um, do everything we can to help them find what they need in Utah. While it was the locations that used to dictate where a film was shot, Increased competition among states and even countries has prompted a different sort of question to be asked. When I first started with the Film Commission 14 years ago, the first question that people would call and ask would be location-based. But now with uh, countries like Canada and 33 other states offering film incentives, the first question they ask is, what is your incentive program and do you have funds available for us? Uh, so it is very, very competitive. Some states offer 20, 30, um, you know, so states like California and, and uh, New York offer 330 and 440 million dollars respectively. Um, some states like Georgia are unlimited in the amount of incentives that they give. Um, our program is a baseline incentive of 20 percent um, back on, the, on their expenditures, um, where some states start at 30% and go up to 35%. Um, we're also in competition with Canada. Uh, there are provincial and uh, federal tax incentives up there. Uh, a project can get back much more of their on-the-ground spend in Canada than they, than they would in Utah. It should be noted that we lost the television series Yellowstone to Montana's film incentive once their program came online because we didn't have enough to support them for a season four. The money spent on large production coming to Utah spills into all areas of the local economy, and they are definitely felt when a production like Yellowstone finds a better incentive. So the question becomes, should the state legislature up those incentives to keep Utah competitive with other locations? We'll discuss that further in our roundtable discussion. For The County Seat, I'm Derek Dowsett. Thanks, Derek. Utah is a beautiful place to shoot films. And we're gonna find out some more reasons when we come back from this commercial break. You're watching The County Seat. Well, welcome back. I'm Sean Milne filling in for Chad Booth and you're watching The County Seat. Today we're joined for our program with three special guests. We have Virginia Pierce, who is the commish or the commissioner of the Utah Film Commission. We have former commissioner Ron Winterton, who serves in the Utah State legislature. And we have Cody Stewart, a uh, legislative professional and uh, consultant here representing Paramount and Viacom CBS. Well, welcome everybody. We appreciate you being here today. Thank you. So as we heard from Derek, he's explained what, uh, you know, the film industry does for Utah. So what are these film incentives? 
Utah is among many states who offer some kind of film industry incentive. Um, we're definitely not alone in that. And our program is a great, consistent, competitive program. We offer 20 to 25% back in either tax credit or cash rebate to productions who come to Utah and take advantage of our great you know, resources, our crew, our location. So anything that they spend in state, they are eligible for that uh, 20 to 25% back on what they spend. So important little clarification mm -hmm. there. If I understand that correctly, that's post-performance. So they have to spend it to get any of that percentage back. This isn't yep. just free money. This is something that they've already spent in, in the state of Utah you're right. So they, they're they kind of pre-approved for what they think they might spend. And then after they shoot their film, they go through a very rigorous audit procedure with an independent CPA and a go-ed compliance, who then will say... And who's go-ed? Um, the Governor's Office of Economic Opportunity, nice. as we now call it, or Go Utah. Um, and then they will say, yes, you know, these expenses qualified. No, these expenses did not qualify. And then, uh, you know, they'll take the percentage off of that. So it's post-performance. If I understand right, they have to spend a half a million dollars to even qualify, correct? It's not just and it come in and you, you get it off the top. They have to put some serious money into the state. They do, and they also have to you know, hire at least 75% local Utah cast and crew. They have to show that they're really, you know, it's a good faith. They have to be fully financed up front. We do have a pretty you know, rigorous criteria that we look for. So while it isn't, you know, it, it's not a first come first serve process. It really is, you know, looking at how much are they going to spend? Where are they going to be filming? We, we don't want to try to spread the love across the state. So we tend to give extra points for people who are shooting in rural Utah. That's an interesting concept. And I want to come back to uh, one element that you brought up here in a few minutes, Virginia, and that is that it's not first come first serve. But Cody, where you represent the industry professionals in today's uh, interview and program, how does this compare with what your client or clients have seen in other states? How many states offer these kind of programs out of the 50? Yeah, so I believe there's around 35 states at this time that offer some form of incentive. And, uh, you know, if you're asking us to rank where Utah sits, uh, more towards the, the lower end of that of that schedule. Uh, I think that what you know Senator Winterton did this last session um, helped a little bit. You know he he sponsors legislation that increased the incentive, um, the, the state incentive, a, a couple million dollars that brings us up a little bit. But I think um, again ranking versus other states, we're, we're not certainly not, not Utah's not at the top. Some states don't have a cap at all. Some states it's it's virtually whatever you can come in and spend. Uh, that's why states like Georgia have such a, a large film industry is because they really don't have a, a cap on the upper end. Other states like California, New Mexico, or even Canada. Canada is another competitor that we, we often have to, to look at. Um, but the thing that, that's, I think, important to remember is that, that Paramount, other Netflix, um, Discovery Channel, they want to come to Utah. They want to be here. I mean, Utah has so much to offer. It, just the diversity of the landscapes, that they're, they're just naturally cinematic. It's just a beautiful location and so much opportunity here that, uh, you know, I think co companies like Paramount and others want to come to Utah. And I think Virginia can tell you I know. that. I was going to cut in and interrupt you and say, I take issue with the fact that we're, that, you know, yes, we are not at the top of that list, but we get a lot of companies saying, we want to shoot in Utah. You have amazing landscapes. You're close to LA. It's an hour and a half flight for us. Um, you know, you're, you're at the top of our list. We're looking at Canada, who has, you know, I think $500 million a year that they spend in tax incentives. As the whole country? As the, actually, that's just um, BC. British Columbia. So, so Vancouver, Vancouver is a growing market that you were referring to. Okay. Um, or California or New Mexico is another competitor. So we're, we're in the range of competitiveness where we um, run into issues is that we just have demand, our demand exceeds our supply. And that's really what Cody's talking about when, you know, people are just looking at how many incentives or how much incentives states offer. A lot of times we won't even make the cut because they look at where we, where we are and they say, oh, it's not even worth calling Utah because they're probably not going to be able to give us an incentive. Well, interesting point. So if British Columbia, a whole province is offering 500 million, what's Utah's cap? 
We're about what ten and then oh, maybe actually twelve not and quite 10. ten. So we're six point seven nine in tax mm. credit ongoing funding. Six yeah, six million and then one point five million in cash. We got a little bump, a one time bump thanks to yeah, the we're just around ten million, ten million dollars. So she spreads that over that's all she can go one year, but if she spreads it over two or three years, you know, you've already allocated what we're going to, to be able to offer. So uh, look at Georgia, you know, they're at 200 million and they keep growing theirs and the, we're seeing people leave the state and go there. Now, we, I look at it that we're selling the landscape of Utah. You can't replicate that anywhere else. They love to be here. We have great uh, studios here, uh, support cast that these people all live here in the state. So it is, uh, we're helping ourselves when we provide these incentives. And, and again, post-performance, you spend the money and then we'll go through the audit. And if you qualify, this is what we'll help you with. That, that's good to know. So by comparison, does British Columbia offer post-performance? Is that what Georgia and New Mexico are also offering? Most, most do. It's, it's a, usually it's a pretty typical or, or standard uh, incentive structure. Again, there's some variance in terms of rates and, and amounts, but uh, it, the, the model is pretty typical across multiple states. Okay. And, and it does sound starkly, well, there's a big gap between 200 million, 500 million, 10 million. And if theirs is similar to ours, I love what I'm hearing from a negotiating standpoint, right? You're, you're spot on. They cannot likely, I have to admit, I don't know everything about Georgia's landscape, but I'm guessing they don't have arches. I'm guessing they don't have Zion or Bryce or many of the other places flags. that are ours, right? Yes, how could I forget the salt flats, right? But exactly, like, that's not going to be cheap to replicate even in either digital or a studio if they were to do it in-house and do a green screen, right? So I love that I'm hearing, I think, that you're negotiating from a position of strength to say, well, we don't need to give you as deep of a discount, but at some point, there's a big difference between 10 and 200. So I want to back up just a little bit, and then we come back to that. When did Georgia get on the scene? I mean, I think most Americans and Utahns would think of California for sure, but New Mexico, Georgia, how'd they get in this? New Mexico is just coming up with theirs. They keep increasing theirs too. And it, it's a very good market to be in because, I mean, yeah, supporting cast comes in, but everything else is pretty much standard and stays in the state of Utah. So we're putting people to work here, our own local people to work. And to, for Georgia, every year they just keep coming up more and more because uh, you look at the, the impacts or the dividends that come from this industry, you know, how, how do you put a, a price on that? There's many studies out there that shows that uh, what comes back that are not, how do you say this, the impacts directly, indirectly, and then those that are supporting the indirect jobs. And, and so, whether it's a motel, whether it's the restaurants, uh, the caterers, the lumber yards, all of those people are employed in the state of Utah. So are we really giving money to big Hollywood? Well, that's, that's actually an interesting stat is that when, when you look at where film production spend their money, 63% of that funding goes to non-film industry businesses. So if you're thinking mm -hmm. of like, oh, it's just the film industry that are benefiting, it's really what you know, Senator Winterton is saying is it's, it's hotels, it's restaurants, it's, you know, it's on the ground spending and construction and dry cleaning and you know, Electrician. electricians and construction costs. I mean, really parking. I mean, it's really everything that a film needs to produce a film, uh, produce their production, especially when you're looking at rural Utah where they've got to come in and essentially build a small city. Mm -hmm. So everything that goes into that. This is a really excellent point and let's dive a little bit deeper when we come back from this commercial break. Again, you're watching The County Seat. Stay tuned. Welcome back to The County Seat. Today we're joined by three special guests and our panelists are discussing the Film Commission and Incentives and Utah's overall landscape opportunities that are quite unique to our state and, and how we've been blessed to be featured in so many films, commercials, and, and video productions. So right as we went into the commercial break, we were talking about primary and secondary kind of jobs, direct and indirect jobs. Um, I, I think I heard a, a fact during the commercial break, one of you had mentioned that for every dollar spent 
towards the promotion of this industry, it correlates to how many X amount of dollars back to our economy in Utah? Yeah, it's Go about, ahead. it's a little over $14 of state GDP. So that's, you know, that works its way in through the jobs and the indirect jobs and the money spent in all of those businesses from, you know, an actual film business to a dry cleaners and all of the other ones we talked about. I mean, you really do see the effect on the ground. And I think that's also what makes rural Utah, they feel it more, you know, a show like Westworld comes in and spends a million dollars in Kanab, Utah. I mean, a million dollars in a month in a place like Kanab, it's felt all through the community. So speaking of rural Utah and this cap of 20, well, excuse me, $10 million and a 20 or 25% rebate that might go back post performance, that seems to me like it would have a really significant amplifier effect in rural Utah for these direct and indirect jobs, right? It it does, and a lot of times you don't even stop to think, you know, whether it's the cafe or the waiter or the server that gets tipped. Uh, it, if it's off peak, like uh, a commercial down in Kanab, okay, uh, they wouldn't have had that had the film industry not come. Mm -hmm. And so, give them a shot in the army in December, January, when they shoot some of these commercials and then go out to the salt flats. And what does that do to Twila and Grantsville on that? You know, it's a shot in the arm. And that's not what we programmed. You know, we don't foresee all of that. We try to project what our revenue will be, but this is basically extra that comes into to rural Utah. The Wasatch Front capitalizes big time. I mean, I know that uh, Hollywood likes to fly into Salt Lake and then 30 minutes they can be on set and, and they don't have that kind of luxury down in LA. It'll take them an hour just to drive to the studio. And, and so, you know, we have a lot to offer. I look at it sometimes that not only is it just film, but we're capitalizing as a state on tourism. Mm -hmm. How many films have you seen that were filmed here and people come to visit just because you know, Back to the Future was filmed there, or uh, just for instance, my son is uh, on the Skinwalker Ranch. Okay, they, they're not asking for any of these incentives because it's kind of a, more of a documentary. History Channel is sponsoring it, and we have people from out of the country coming there to rattle the gates or take a picture there. And, and several of the times we have people from various states that come for a talk or, or answers, there and that's just extras for the unit basin people that are going to come in there just to see the gates or to stop and maybe see dinosaur land we're capitalizing off of something that this industry has done to promote utah so where do you find those uh, contributing factors that would help quantify these incentives we offer. That's a really interesting point that I can attest to in my previous role in Tooele County, right? Is just, it blew my mind when I became a county commissioner that the most photographed place in Utah was not Arches. I was sure it was Arches, you know, Delicate Arch, but it was the Bonneville Salt Flats because in some cases, all the movies that have been filmed there from Independence Day to World's Fastest Indian, you know, a, a bunch of them. Of the yeah, exactly. Just so many, in addition to its natural beauty. And, you know, a conversation had a few months ago with some folks. I wonder how successful our tourism campaign in Utah is, which we all can admit is wildly successful with the Mighty Five campaign because in part of the filming, right? Well, and that's something we're looking at. I mean, we say in, at the Film Commission that Utah is America's film set. And it's really been a test of, you know, the thousands of movies that have shot here since the early 1930s and 40s, the Westerns, that bring people to Utah. And in, in a preliminary study that we did with the Office of Tourism, we found that 30% of tourists were coming to Utah because they had seen some Utah on screen within a film or television series. So that's, that's a great number. That's, that's fantastic. So speaking of which, when I hear $1 spent yields 14 more through the economy, and you're telling me that it's particularly as a local government official or a local business owner that benefits somehow from this industry, if I give up 20 to 25% of $14 in order to get the remaining dollars, I'll do that all day long. Like that's a great return on investment or ROI. So tell me, Virginia, have, or really anyone, have we lost jobs because we haven't had a, a bigger cap to how much we can give as an incentive like Georgia or 
Uh, British Columbia? <laughs> I mean, yes, we are definitely, we, that's something we track. And recently, because um, for a variety of reasons, you saw has gotten on the map with larger productions in many cases because of organizations like Paramount that are now shooting in state, that puts us on everyone's radar. You know, oh, where is, you know, where is Yellowstone shot? Oh, well, for the last three years, it was shot in Utah, but, you know, Cody, if you want to explain <laughs> the next step. <laughs> so, so to your question of, of have, have opportunities been lost to Utah due to, to a smaller instead of the answer, absolutely yes. And, and Yellowstone is one example, but there are plenty of examples. The one that was really shocking to me as a native Utah was, was BYU TV. They actually produced some, some productions that they, they wanted to do in Utah, but they, they, like any other entity, they have to do a balance sheet. Does this pencil out? Does this actually make sense? Where's our best economic opportunity? And they, they ran the numbers and they decided they had to film elsewhere. They had to go to Georgia um, because- Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're saying BYU, a total Utah brand, has had to go clear across the country because this the, doesn't pencil the, out the, here the incentive in made more sense to do it to, to do it well there. and i think what is different about the film industry is that these incentives really are part of the budget as cody said it's not as if this is an extra benefit to them to come like many business business incentives end up being you know that's icing on the cake the way the film industry works is anything over the, you know the spending over five hundred thousand to a million dollars is has now built in that incentive into their budget because we've, you know, the, the country has been offering incentives since the early 2000s. So it's just, you know, that's just the nature of the business. And if Utah wants to remain competitive, we have to continue to offer an incentive. That's fantastic. So we're going to take another commercial break. We'll be back for some final thoughts. And I'd love to hear, you know, what you think the next steps might be. Thanks for watching. Uh, you're watching The County Seat, and we'll be right back. Thanks again for watching The County Seat. We've had a great guest panel today talking about film industry in Utah and use of incentives. So right before the last commercial break, we were talking about some, some you know, jobs that have gone somewhere else, potentially with other states and some missed opportunities. What would be the next step then? Well, on behalf of the Film Commission, I mean, we, as I said, we're just experiencing some incredible growth and demand of Utah as a film set. Um, in the past six months, we've had 33 productions that would like to be shooting in Utah that represents about $200 million of economic impact. So for us, it's just trying to balance that demand with the supply that we have. And, and she shouldn't be in the position to have, having to pick winners or losers, which ones do I give, which ones I don't, because she has very little to work with, and we'd like to give everybody an opportunity. But as I look at it, in, in whether it's rural or urban, you know, the locals ought to get behind us. I know on one production, you know, 35 rooms a night in a local motel, and your TRT taxes and that, what does that do? And so I think that we need to rally around this industry and see what value they actually bring to the state of Utah. It was lodging, especially after this last year, right? I just think it's important to remember that the, the film and television, television industry is a, a hundred, hundred plus billion dollar industry and they're only going to, going to spend more. If you think of people's habits, uh, you know, how many people listening to the show today, uh, you know, subscribe to Netflix, to Amazon, to Hulu, I, I think we all do to some form or fashion and it's only going to grow and so there's a huge opportunity here. There's, there's an enormous amount of money and jobs and, and investment that Utah could and should be a, a bigger player in. I, I think that would be my parting thought is there's no reason why Utah can't be a premier film destination in the country and in the world. We, we have, you know, what, what we have here is unique and we should share it with the world. And with a very small investment, I think we could be a much bigger player in this space. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, guests, for your contribution to today's discussion. And remember, folks, that the government closest to you is the most responsive and most effective. Please reach out to your community leaders and have a great conversation with them about what interests you. And be sure to check out the county seat on our social platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and the like. And again, until next week, you've been watching The County Seat. Have a good day. Thank you for watching The County Seat. Be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications to keep up to date on the program and happenings around Utah.